Welcome to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We have a quick video for you to share um, with everyone that's gonna be here. Um, so I'm gonna let you go ahead and, and look into this. Welcome to the first ever Crystal Ray Network Virtual College Fair. We congratulate you students and parents for taking the next step in preparing for college by attending today. We're so glad you're here. And we're glad Father John Foley is here as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's, it is indeed a, a privilege and, a, and a, a blessing to be able to collaborate in this uh, first ever event for the Cristo Rey Network, the Cristo Rey Network Schools. You know, all of us, all of us, students, um, teachers, parents, all of us were born with certain gifts and all we go through life trying to make those gifts contribute even more to the world we live in. Uh, this world is our responsibility. God entrusted this world to us, and it's up to us to make the best of what God has given us. And that's what education is all about. It's about, it's about taking what the gifts that God has given us, the virtues that God has implanted in our souls, and making them as effective as they can be. So education is a way of making making my contribution to the world even better. Thank you, Father Foley. So students, today your community surrounds you with over 23,000 alumni nationwide and 37 high schools in 24 states, currently 12,000 students and 5,000 of those students are juniors and seniors, just like you. We're joined by 115 participating colleges these colleges are ready to invest in your future. Some of these colleges have been partnering with us for over a decade. You'll have the opportunity, students and parents, to attend a Financial Aid 101 session offered in either English or in Spanish. If you don't attend every session, don't worry, it'll be available on YouTube, so you won't miss anything. Don't forget about the Ask Me About session. This is your opportunity to ask any question you want and to leave confident that you came and feel empowered to start your college journey. We thank you all for your commitment to your future, classes of 2022 and 2023, and your parents and guardians, students, college counselors, and college representatives. Thank you all for being here. Como una última palabra, le, bendi, le pedimos al Señor que bendiga a todos los que están envueltos en, esta, en este esfuerzo de de familiarizarnos con, mejor con el mundo académico de la universidad. Que el Señor bendiga la buena voluntad y, los, y, los, y lo, la, la, el deseo de todos de, para mejorar este mundo y para mejorar la, las vidas de los que nos rodean. Que el Señor bendiga este gran familia Cristo Rey. Welcome to the first ever Cristo Rey Network virtual college. Well, you've been welcome once and you've welcome twice. So welcome again to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participate in this event. Um, we have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jessica and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Just know your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your question to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the different sessions for today, so make sure you're signing up for more on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash crystal dash ray. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first school and that'll be Cornell College. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us here today. I am gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can tell you a little bit more about Cornell. My name is Megan Kuhn and I am an Associate Director of Admission and Chicago Regional Representative for Cornell, as well as being a 2015 alum of the college. So I went to Cornell, I work for Cornell, they just can't get rid of me. We are a small private liberal arts college located in Mount Vernon, Iowa, and founded all the way back in 1853. But you'll be hearing from some other small liberal arts colleges today, but something about Cornell makes us pretty different. 
So instead of juggling four or more courses each semester during your traditional semester plan, Cornell students take one class at a time. This is last year's academic calendar. You will take one class for 18 days. Then you have four days off and then you go on to your next course. So that is a total of eight courses a year, just like you would find in a traditional semester plan. And you're earning the same amount of credit hours as you would on a traditional semester schedule. We also have two summer flex blocks in case uh, you take a block off during the normal school year or just feeling pretty ambitious uh, and wanting to take more than eight classes in a year. As you can see, we are in class Monday through Friday, of course, you get your weekends. You know, we're not monsters. We don't expect you to study all the time. And our class hours are from nine to 11, and then again from one to three. And because we're in class for about four hours a day, that's why we don't rely a lot on lecture based learning. You know, no one wants to get lectured at for four hours a day. And there are some pretty big advantages to learning on this block system. So by the first day, your professor knows your name. And within just a few days, they really know you as a person. And since you have no other classes to focus on, you can really immerse yourself in that one subject. Um, by the end of the block, our students actually spend more time in class than you would on a traditional semester plan. And the thing about the block plan is that our courses happen where they make sense. So that means our science courses spend a long stretches of time in the lab. Theater courses can devote themselves to an entire performance. And if it makes sense, our courses can go off campus. This means maybe for the entire block, maybe just for the whole day. Of course, these are some absolutely beautiful photos from some of our incredible study abroad courses. And there are just so many different opportunities for immersive learning on the block plan. One of the newest programs that we have at Cornell is our reimagining of our core curriculum and reimagining what liberal arts really means. So each factor on this graph is uh, a little bit more of an in-depth educational experience for our students. So our foundations courses, those are your, your typical first year seminar kind of courses and introduction to learning on the block plan, as well as your first year writing course. These are courses that help connect you with your student success team and the kind of our greater campus community. Going on, we build our essential abilities and these are areas that we identify that make you, that are essential to having a successful career after college. This is quantitative reasoning, intensive writing skills, as well as foreign language. And explorations courses, of course, those are when you're really diving into your major discovering that potential that path that you're taking and these are you know they can cover a lot of different bases in your exploratory courses ingenuity and in action is some really exciting stuff you choose from two different experiential learning uh opportunities from six different areas and that includes civic engagement or community service um, creative expression global connections leadership and throughout all of this, that is where that portfolio option comes in. This is the document that you have when you leave Cornell to tell your future employer, your future graduate school, every experience that you've had in college and what makes you competitive. And I mentioned your first year success team. You are not alone when you come to Cornell College. No one has studied on this kind of wacky block plan calendar before, and we don't expect you to know exactly what that looks like. So you have your first year success team who are all folks on campus dedicated to making sure you have a successful transition from high school to college. Here we have a beautiful photograph of part of our historic Hilltop campus, just to tell you a little bit about the, the resources that we have for all of our students. I'm gonna be popping up quite a few different little flags on this slide. So of course you can see some of our residence halls, 96% of our students do live on campus for all four years. We have one dining hall on campus. Also, Every, a lot of colleges say this, but we have really good food. Our uh, dining services provider is, has a deep commitment to local food and sustainability. So when you walk into Cornell College's dining hall, there is a board right there that tells you what farms your food came from. Additionally, we have further services on campus. You know, if you're not feeling very good, of course, we have our health services center. All of our students participate in the Cornell Wellness Network. These are just areas to support your emotional, 
your physical, your spiritual well-being while you're a student on our campus. These are where some activities happen on campus. Of course, in Thomas Commons, right over around here, we have our theater dance building, our art building, slightly out of view of this photo. And here you can see some of our academic buildings. And right at the center of our campus is Cole Library. And that is where a lot of our different sort of uh, academic support and mentorship areas happen. We have a brand new natural sciences center on campus. So for all of those who are interested in natural sciences, this is a, a really wonderful thing that just opened in 2019. So we're very excited about that. In addition to currently renovating our sports center. So we do offer division three athletics. And if you are interested in participating in athletics at a brand new facility, our new sports center will be open in uh, the fall of 2022. And of course, we want to make sure that our students go on to great success after experiencing everything that the block plan has to offer. 96% of Cornell graduates completed their degree within four years, and 88% of our most recent graduating class completed research projects, and 97% of those who were pursuing jobs were employed. We do say pursuing jobs because a lot of our students go on to uh, graduate school for their study right away, especially for those folks who are looking for pre-med. Our medical school acceptance rate is 78%, which is about double the national average. Our law school acceptance rate is 91%. So, of course, pretty proud of that as well. In our alumni body, we have Pulitzer Prize winners, the world's foremost expert on John Steinbeck, a few astronauts as well. And Harper Reed uh, from the class of 2001 was the chief technology officer for President Obama's reelection campaign. And like you heard from the president of Cristo Ray Network, we understand that college is a shared investment. This means that we invest in you as students because you are investing in us for your education. New at Cornell is our Freeway Scholarship. And this is for all students who are coming from basically states that are connected to Iowa. So that is got just one minute left. Uh, we have this, these opportunities for students from Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas, um, and Nebraska. And this is a guaranteed automatic $30,000 scholarship for all admitted students from those areas. For students who are not coming from those areas, we do have academic merit scholarships, of course, and those range from twenty-one to thirty-four thousand dollars a year, guaranteed for all four years. So I'm going to go ahead and you know say goodbye, sign off for Cornell College. I would love to hear from you if you have any questions. Feel free to put those down in the Q and A. Again, my name is Megan. I am so happy to have been joined by you all this evening, uh, this afternoon rather. And if you are interested in visiting Cornell College, I will put that link right in the chat below. Thanks so much. All right, thank you so much. So next up, we have the College of Wooster. All right, thank you so much. Um, first of all, welcome again. My name is uh, David Newberry Oakley, uh, and we're going to get kind of rolling right away. I tend to be extra chatty and always run out of time on these presentations. So, uh, again, quick introduction to myself. I'm a Worcester grad, very familiar, familiar uh, with the college, and so hopefully a great resource for you all today. So, some quick facts, a really kind of basic introduction uh, to the College of Worcester. Uh, you can see that on screen, and we'll highlight a couple of these. Uh, uh, points a little bit later on, but about around 2,000 students that we have attending the College of Worcester, uh, and the College of Worcester, uh, for those 2,000 students, 99% of our students live on campus for all four years, so it's a really strong campus community, uh, that, and, it, and that's something our students really value about the Worcester experience. Only about 31% of our students come from the, state of, from the state of Ohio, so our students are coming from around the country and around the world, which is something that, again, just helps to the diversity of Worcester. And it is a theme throughout this entire conversation. Uh, it's Worcester's diversity uh, as well, too. So there are kind of a couple kind of things to remember, uh, hopefully after this conversation. Uh, number one, that we consider, consider ourselves to be America's premier college for mentored undergraduate research. We'll talk about what that means in a hot second. Uh, that we are a global campus and a thriving community. We'll talk more about that diversity that I'll keep hitting on, but also a little bit about our local community as well, too. And we'll start uh, with the local community. So we are about an hour south of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and about an hour and a half north uh, of uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, city of about 30,000 people, 
And we kind of sit right in the center of town um, for what we call our north end of town or our downtown area as well too. I always feel like our location, uh, this is a great shot of the, uh, our downtown area, but our, our location is kind of one of the things I like to celebrate, even though we are in a smaller town, because what it means is that our, 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 our students are really focused on developing relationships with each other. Uh, what's nice though, is that the city's not so, uh, uh, so small that you can't get off campus, right? So we've got a great downtown area. So if you wanna hit up a coffee shop in downtown Worcester, instead of studying in a library, there's four or five of those in downtown Worcester that you can hit up. Uh, there are a number of different restaurants in downtown Worcester whenever I go out. But my wife always bump into a couple of Worcester students in downtown Worcester. But we also have an uptown area as well, too, that has uh, all the really important things. Uh, I always call it the strip mall area, but it's got Starbucks, Chipotle, Five Guys, those types of things as well, too. So our students can get off campus and take advantage of the city. But again, the city is not so large that it's a distraction and, and, um, and, and pull students away from their, their academic experience and an opportunity to connect with those students that come, are coming from around the country uh, and around the world. This is a, a great sketch of the, the, the campus. Campus is actually about 240 acres, but really about 100 acres of campus is what you're seeing here um, uh, in, in this particular map. Lots of green space. Right now, students outside taking advantage of, of all the green space around campus. You can be on one side of campus to the other side. It's a very walkable campus in less than, I would say, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and even if, even if you are a student athlete, our fields are right there on campus. And so again, just a very accessible campus uh, and something that we, we're really proud of. This is kind of a quick look at um, our campus in different seasons. And when, when, you, when folks walk around campus on tours, uh, they oftentimes I think, come back and being surprised that we are only about 2,000 students because of the space that we, we occupy. Uh, we've, just, we've got a great grounds cr crew. You can see in some of these images does a great job of just taking, a, taking, a bit and taking care of our, uh, our campus. Uh, and also, like, it's just a high energy campus. And that's something that a lot of folks notice when they're walking around. It's like people are engaging with each other. People are engaging with visitors. And that's just something that um, uh, I think is unique to Worcester is how engaging the campus community uh, tends to be. If you're looking at the student body and like how to get involved, you've got lots to do on campus, over 130 organizations uh, that students can, can participate in. And, and, and those interests are kind of all over the place. About a third of our students uh, are play, participating in a varsity sport. Uh, we are a division three school athletically. Uh, so we don't have scholarships for uh, athletics, but we do offer scholarships uh, based upon the strength of a student's admissions application. Um, but Division Three, we also have great music opportunities on campus. You can see about a third of our students are involved in music on campus and even music scholarships. If you're a student who is thinking about majoring in music uh, or minoring in music or just being involved, uh, and it's not gonna be a major or minor, just a great way to get involved on campus and there's some scholarship opportunities that are available uh, there for students. You can see about 17% of our students are international students. Right now, that's the second highest percentage of international students for any school in the state of Ohio. Uh, so very diverse there. I think we rank something like 19th among all, amongst all small liberal arts colleges within the, uh, within the country. So something we're really proud of is our campus diversity. And you see about 24% of our students uh, are US students of color, but with over 40% of our students coming from a, a diverse background, I think it just recognizes that uh, there's so many different perspectives and experiences and ideas that are coming together at the College of Worcester. Uh, our, we feel like students are coming from small towns, they're coming from big cities, from different faiths and different cultures, and all those things kind of come together uh, to help us accomplish, accomplish our central mission, mission. And we feel like learning from people from across the country and around the world is more important than it's ever been as well, too. I skipped one. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about research here from the last few minutes. The thing I wanna point out before I jump into research is a little bit about the average class size and teacher ratio. For us, it's about 18 students. And for us, having uh, faculty have very close relationships with students, it's a priority at the College of Worcester. Uh, classes tend to be very interactive and most of them are, are discussion-based. Uh, at the College of Worcester though, every single student uh, will actually have a senior research project experience, right? So every single student, not just students who are in a particular honors program or in a certain major, are going to sit down and work one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member on a senior research project. 
Uh, when I say research, this is sometimes what students think, oh, it's gonna be in the sciences, but it's just not in the sciences as well too. It can be experimental, it could be more analytical, and also it can be creative as well. This is a great example. This is Jeff Lantis, one of our professors in the political science department, uh, but a great example of what that experience look like, looks like. Uh, when you're a senior, you come in with an idea. Here's something that I want to learn more about. I want to research for my senior research project. We give you a Worcester faculty member, Jeff Lantis in this particular case, and he says, great, let me help you accomplish that. And our students work one-on-one -on -one with that faculty member for the entire year to accomplish that senior research project and just learn more about something that not just, uh, not that we think is important, but that they have a particular interest in uh, at the College of Worcester. So why is it important? We feel like this uh, you know, IS is important for a number of different reasons. You can read what's on the screen. I always talk about uh, a couple of different things, which is graduate school uh, and also job placement as well. If you're looking at a graduate school program down the road, this type of research is excellent preparation for what you're gonna be uh, experiencing with a master's and definitely if you're looking at a PhD. So we always feel like our students have a leg up because they've experienced uh, working and doing research with faculty members at the undergraduate level. And so they're ready to take off when they have an opportunity at the graduate school level. The other piece of it is for me, it's, um, I always call it, um, um, uh, oh, now it's slipping my mind. <laughs> I always call it um, uh, project management skills, right? So all of our students know how to work with a supervisor or an advisor and how to check in on a weekly basis. They know how to do resources on something that they don't know, always know a lot about, but they know how to do that research, figure it out, and they also start to make recommendations about what to do next. Just great project management skills, which is something that's really important uh, if you're entering the job course. We love Worcester, uh, research at the College of Worcester and really value the experience, but we also get a lot of recognition for um, uh, across the country for around, uh, get a lot of recognition for our research experience. Since 2002, US News and World Report uh, has done a project, uh, done a presentation where they essentially say, who does the best job of undergraduate research and senior capstone and Worcester and Princeton have been the only two schools that have made that list every single year. So something we're proud of, that's my presentation, <laughs> uh, but I hope to have questions from you all in the chat uh, and hopefully you can visit us either in person or virtually. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much. Next up is the University of Toledo. Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Kabrila Clark. I am with the University of Toledo, my regional enrollment manager, um, and I'm honored to be speaking with you all about all that U Toledo has to offer. Um, so just to start, the University of Toledo is a mid-sized university located in Toledo, Ohio. Um, Toledo, Ohio is the fourth largest city in the state of Ohio and um, is constantly known for being ranked um, among the top in the nation for some of our metro parks, that type of thing. Um, so we have roughly 20,000 students, 16,000 undergraduates specifically, and our average class size is 31 students, student to faculty ratio is about 20. Um, so I like to say that's a happy medium just because you're gonna um, get the opportunity to really develop one-on-one -on -one connections with professors, but you also will be meeting new people throughout your entire four years and you won't know everyone across campus. Um, so it really allows you to experience both of those things. As far as programs at the University of Toledo, we have over 130 of those, um, ranging from arts, humanities, STEM, um, a wide variety of options. And we're mostly known for our engineering programs, nursing, business programs are great. Um, and then we have pharmacy and I always like to mention cosmetic science and formulation design just because that's a unique one that not everyone's familiar with or has heard. Um, something a uh, uh, fact about Toledo is that 83% of students um, are not from Toledo. So um, they come from other places. We often hear that um, most people believe that the students that do attend Toledo are from the area and that couldn't be further from the truth. So I always like to throw that out there just because I think that points and speaks to the diversity on campus and um, how much of a variety there is in the places that people come from. So there's um, always gonna be someone new to meet someone from you know, somewhere where you're not from, which is nice. Um, as far as um, majors and programs, we also have a law school and medical school. And so we are one of the only institutions in Northwest Ohio to have a medical school, which is something we pride ourselves on. 
In addition to that, we also have a simulation center. Um, so many of our nursing students get to work in that and um, go through simulations with um, dummies that can, um, you know, breathe, blink, that type of thing, so that you kind of get that hands-on experience um, while you're studying. And it's a really cool opportunity if you ever get to tour it or see it yourself. As far as um, campus life and such, we are division one. We do compete in the MAC against schools like Akron, Miami, um, Ohio, and then um, we do have over 400 student organizations. So those range from Oatmeal Cookie Lovers Club to Ski Club, fencing, there's something for everyone. Um, that's also a point that I really pride myself on is just because we allow a space for everyone to feel welcome. No matter your interest, um, there's going to be something for everyone. And if there isn't a club dedicated to it, the good news is, is that you likely can create it very easily. Additionally, um, there's social, philanthropic, cultural, religious groups. Um, so really, any type of interest you may have, there will be something for you. Um, we have nine residence halls across our campus, and first-year students aren't required to live in any specific residence hall. There is one that is designated specifically for first-year students, but you're not required to live there. Um, those residence halls range from more communal style to suite style. There's a wide variety. And then um, you do have to live within 25 miles to commute if you do have an interest and we do require students to live on campus for two years. As far as um, support and community across campus, so we have career services that is always assisting students with finding um, jobs, internships, um, on-campus jobs, you name it, they would be happy to help you in that regard. And then we have success coaches that are gonna be um, kind of opposite of the, of the advisor, where the advisor is gonna be academics focused, getting you through your plan of study and onto, you know, a graduate degree if that interests you or a job that type of thing the success coach is going to be more focused on um, other interests that you have and helping you succeed in those areas so if you're wondering about where th something is located on campus or um, how to manage your time a little bit better those success coaches are there for that reason to ensure that you're finding success throughout your time at Toledo um, we also have a counseling center on campus which is free for students to use and um, definitely encourage our students to maintain um, a good balance and healthy well-being um, and then we also have an on-campus medical center as well so as far as honors program we do offer that for students and um, a 3.5 is required for students to be considered for the honors program if you don't have the 3.5 that's perfectly fine there's a supplemental application and an essay that's required and they would just ask that you kind of explain um, your high school and academic situation. And if you have a little bit less than that, they may still consider you for the program. That program is really great just because it allows students to develop their skills and um, leadership abilities. That way they can go on to you know, do great things. They often um, take field trips and um, host different um, activities in their, among their college that are really unique. Sometimes they'll go to Cedar Point and do lots of fun stuff to make sure that students are taking advantage of all that they do have to offer and pushing themselves um, to a different level of um, academic rigor. As far as application, um, so our application is free through the month of September um, for those of you that are seniors and um, typically it is $40. So I would definitely encourage you if you haven't yet applied and you are a senior and are interested, definitely um, wanna make sure that you get that submitted sooner rather than later. Um, our application, I will include a link later, and um, we are rolling admissions, so we will begin releasing admissions decisions soon, and those decisions will then be released, and we will continue to release them as students apply. Um, as far as um, the uh, um, tuition and fees, sorry, um, they, uh, we have um, many different scholarships. We offer a presidential scholarship, which is our most competitive full ride. Um, room and board, you get a one-time stipend to study abroad or do a research project. That is a very competitive scholarship um, and it does require an interview um, and 12 students are selected to come to campus to interview for that scholarship. And then we also have a Levis, Leader scholarship, Levis Leadership Scholarship that um, allows students to take a class to develop leadership skills, um, develop their network across campus and that one offers a thousand dollars for the first year and then a little bit of a smaller stipend those following years. As far as merit scholarships for the University of Toledo, those go up to six thousand dollars. 
um, and they are actually test blind, which is new for us this year. So your test scores um, are not required and will not be considered for your merit scholarship, solely that GPA. And then we are also test optional for admission purposes. So um, you do not have to include your test scores. You will be opt out, opted in automatically to being test optional. If you do wanna include those test scores, you would need to mark that on your application and we would consider those. Initially, we do have a tuition guarantee which locks in um, your tuition and general fees for the time that you would be at Toledo for four years. Um, so that's really our commitment to students to make sure that we ensure that you um, are getting the best bang for your buck and we are keeping our costs low and affordable for you. We are one of the lowest, um, most affordable Ohio public institutions and we do um, graduate students with some of the lowest student debt in the state of Ohio, which is something we're very proud of. So um, as far as um, Rocket Nation scholarship, that's an out, um, out of state scholarship that's offered to students. Depending on your GPA, you could um, receive up to $8,000. And that essentially um, almost knocks off the full cost of the out of state surcharge. So again, another commitment to make sure that we're making sure that out-of-state students are also included in that affordability piece. Um, other than that, we are open for visits. So I would definitely encourage you to visit. We also have a virtual visit if you have any interest in doing that and can't get to campus. And I think that's all I have. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Um, so next up, we have Miami University, Oxford, Ohio. Thank you so much, Jessica. I am going to share my screen here and would love to share with you just a little bit about Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. If you did not know, it's game day. So um, I have set my background accordingly. Um, we are a division one um, institution for sports and I'm really excited that our Red Hawks are playing today. We're located in Oxford, Ohio. And it was actually just recently named the most beautiful college town in America uh, by Travel Trivia Guide. And uh, we are very frequently uh, featured in Forbes and US News and World Report for not just um, the beauty of our college town, um, but also for the strength of our community and the strength of our undergraduate teaching. We are a mid-sized university of about 18,000 students. Um, so we're kind of that Goldilocks of, of colleges and universities for students who really love um, the, the liberal arts ethos of the small liberal arts colleges, um, but love the opportunities of the larger public universities. Miami sits right in between there as a liberal arts institution, but with a public mission um, and about 18,000 students. So what does that mean? That means that on our campus, uh, we have over 100 majors, over 100 or over 600 clubs and organizations for students to be a part of, and a lot of life happening within just a couple of square miles. Our students are required to live on campus for their first year, um, but then for the remaining three years, they can choose to live on campus or choose to live um, elsewhere. By elsewhere, I mean about 99% of our students live in what we call the mile square, um, right around campus. Um, you'll be able to see when you visit Oxford, um, all of the students who live in houses, some of them um, with very interesting names or apartments right next to campus, because Oxford um, is so much a part of Miami University's campus. Students are walking to and from uptown um, and to our beautiful campus. We have um, multiple colleges, and I just want to introduce you to a few of them and let you know about some of the popular or um, new majors that we have. Um, and that is that uh, number one, we have our College of Arts and Science uh, that houses nearly half of our students, about 60 of our majors are located there. Um, this is where we have not only multiple majors, but we have a pre-law center, a humanities center, a pre-med center, all dedicated for rounding out your experience regardless of your major, for what your future plans are for grad school or professional school. And our College of Creative Arts 
is also um, located on our campus and has um, a really great opportunity for those of you who are interested in that fine art school experience, but you really want the full college university experience as well. Um, this is where we have studio art degrees. Uh, you can um, pursue, of course, theater, performing arts, music with multiple tracks. Um, and because it's also located at the home of Farmer School of Business, where Miami is known for our business program, we have students who are interested in our new major, arts management and arts entrepreneurship. So if you're a student who really wants that fine arts experience, um, loves what you're doing in high school and you want to continue that um, in college, Miami is a great option for you. And it's a great option if you decide you want to make a business of it for yourself as well. Our College of Education, Health and Society is where our education majors are located, everything from primary up to secondary education. It's also where we have nutrition, kinesiology, um, social work. It's where our sport leadership and management major um, are located. What I love to brag about with our nutrition program, um, our students have a 100% placement rate into dietitian um, internships. Uh, that's double the national average. Um, so we're just really proud of how much our students are wanted um, in the fields while current students um, seeking internships and field placements. Our College of Engineering and Computing is also where you'll find all of our engineering majors, computer science, and we have our brand new robotics engineering major in our College of Engineering and Computing as well. And there are a few things I like to call out here. Um, it's not just about building your engineering skills to make you a fantastic leader um, and engineer um, and citizen of the world. So what you'll see in our College of Engineering and Computing is students are participating in societies, centers, um, clubs, and organizations that are really working hard to, to invent things to in response to COVID, um, to invent things to make um, people who, who need assistance um, to, to function, to move, who can't walk, um, make their lives easier. And um, it's really, really cool to see some of the projects that our students are, are coming up with while uh, pursuing their undergraduate engineering degrees. It is also um, ranked a top 10 engineering program for colleges and universities without doctorate engineering programs. So the work does speak for itself um, and our students speak for themselves as graduates, but um, it's pretty cool to see what our students are doing with heart and to make the world a better place in, in that college as well. Our Farmer School of Business is also uh, what we're known for. Uh, so that is one of our pillar programs. It is a selective admission process. So that means you'll be considered for admission to the university. And then um, you'll also be considered for whether or not you're admitted to the Farmer School of Business. Um, but this is where we have our marketing majors, our human capital leadership and management, accounting, economics. Um, it's also what houses our Center for Entrepreneurship. And any student with any major at Miami University can co-major in entrepreneurship. A co-major is something that has to be tacked on to um, a full major at Miami University, but you'll graduate with both. And it's a chance for students who um, are pursuing something, maybe a biology major, um, to really get that business education before graduating from Miami. I always note our graduate school because at Miami University, we do have over 30 combined bachelor's and master's programs for students who want to pursue both at the same time and graduate still in four to five years. And lastly, we have our nursing program. And we're very proud of our location and also how successful our, our students are doing in the program. This is relatively new. Uh, we haven't necessarily even graduated a class yet, um, but uh, we'll be graduating our first class in the next year or two. And um, nursing has immediately taken off. Students are able to pursue placements in both acute care and community care settings. We're centrally located. So there are a lot of um, placements right here in Butler County, but also in Cincinnati, in Dayton, and students are able to, to very easily get to um, any of the field experiences that they need in addition to their education program. So here, uh, we love to let students and families know that we 
yes, are a, a more selective institution, um, but we believe in performance in the classroom um, and outside of the classroom. And we're going to look at the whole student, and we want you to be a whole person um, engaged, involved in and outside of the classroom when you're at Miami as well. So it's not just about grades, it's about all that you're going to do and all the opportunities that you'll have at Miami University to continue pursuing the things that you love. And um, some of that might be research. About 2,000 undergraduates work on funded research each year. And as a first year student, you can have the experience of our first year research experience where we connect you with um, research with a faculty member, teach you the logistics of that in a way that's just not intimidating for a first year student. I already talked to you about athletics, um, so I'd like to let you know our students also study abroad more than most other institutions, so we're very, very proud of that. Um, and lastly, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, our rankings, of course, for law school and med school in our ranking among public universities. And important deadlines. I want you to remember two things. November 1, get the application in by November 1 for our honors and scholarship opportunities, which I'm happy to share with you about. Um, and also, um, I'm gonna show you this uh, before I end today. Uh, we do have a grid for merit scholarships that is no longer based on test score. It's now based on a weighted high school GPA. And if your school does not weight the GPA, we will actually weight it for you and give you whatever bump up we can to make sure that you're automatically considered for scholarships as long as you get that application complete and get everything in. All right, thank you so much. I look forward to answering your question. All right, if I could have all of our representatives come back on the screen. Um, so turn your cameras on. We have a few questions that we would love to talk with you a little bit about. And we're gonna answer the questions in the same order that we presented. So the first question to the panel is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? My biggest piece of advice is to always be your authentic self. Don't be the student that you think the university wants. Be who you are. That, I think that uh, there are not a lot of times in life where it's appropriate to brag, except for in the college admissions process. Like, let people know who you are, what you've been about, what you've been involved in, so that they can find ways to, you know, that will influence admission, could influence scholarships. So don't be afraid to brag or ashamed to brag in the, the, the admissions process. My bit of advice would be um, to breathe because ultimately it's all going to work out just fine. Um, but also take ownership of your college search. There's nothing more satisfying to us as admissions professionals than you reaching out. Um, we love hearing from guidance counselors, we love hearing from parents, but ultimately we want to work and speak with you. So we wanna hear from you, be that person that takes the initiative to reach out. Um, the advice has so far just been so good that I'm gonna give you a really practical brass tax one. Um, and that is that I encourage you to use a personal email account that will not all of a sudden be turned off um, when you graduate from high school, because we're going to continue to communicate to you if you confirm enrollment at one of our institutions all the way through to your first day of classes. And very often we find students wondering why they all of a sudden aren't hearing from us. Um, so choose a personal and appropriate email address for the process with us. Absolutely good advice. Um, we're gonna have one more question. What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Same order. This is a pretty easy one for me. I want students to remember that Cornell operates on a one course at a time academic calendar and we're one of just two colleges in the nation that operate on that kind of calendar. And undergraduate research is, is the piece for me as well too. Just the fact that again, you're gonna work that senior year, not on something that we're gonna tell you what you're, you're gonna be researching, but you're gonna decide what your research focus is gonna be. And it's gonna be a factor number there to support you every step of the way. I'd have to say um, being such a comprehensive university, we're one of 27 universities that has the offerings that we do, including the law and medical programs that we do. So that's something that I'm very proud of. 
At Miami University, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. So I will let you seek those out and seek what you might want to remember about the experience and use this as a chance to plug one of my favorite programs that actually just won a diversity STEM award this past year. And I would like to encourage you to look into our Bridges program. Our students who attend the diversity program for Bridges um, are eligible to receive scholarships that are also stackable on top of any merit scholarships that you'll receive at Miami. All right, well, thank you so much to our panelists and for you for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a quick five question survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. We encourage you to join the next session and the one after that to learn more about colleges. If you um, did not get a chance to see ones that happened earlier in the week um, or want to catch this one again, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as others at strivescan.com forward slash crystal dash ray. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.